Welcome back guys. Today we're going to take a look at an expansion for one of my favorite games currently, X-Wing Miniatures. Specifically we're going to look at the Wave 3 releases, which include 40 ships, including this uh, Lambda Class Shuttle. This is the only large ship from the expansion, the other three are normal smaller sized, which include the TIE Bomber, the B-Wing, and Kyle Katarn's Moldy Crow, or POC 290. The uh, ship that Kyle Katarn flies actually isn't from the movies, it's, it's from the video game, so it's the first release that's not movie related. So uh, it's pretty interesting, it's a new, new direction, we'll kind of go through that as well. But specifically we're going to take a look at each ship individually, uh, all the accessories and upgrades and crew members that they each come with, tell you what I think of each one individually, and then at the end I will uh, give you like an overview of the entire wave as a whole, what I think of it, what it adds to the game, what I don't like about it, and uh, give you my review of it. So let's take a look at the TIE Bomber first, and then we'll cover the Lambda Shuttle and then the Rebel Forces after that. So here we have the TIE Bomber pack. This is all the cards that come with it. I left out the uh, cardboard elements. They're all pretty much the same. Shield tokens, stress tokens, target locks, things like that. There are a couple of bomb tokens. We'll look at the cards here in just a moment though. So here are the, here's the actual TIE Bomber itself. It's got that trademark double cockpit going on. The TIE advanced looking wings. Uh, and that really awesome cobalt blue. This is one of my uh, favorite ships from the movies when I first saw this as a kid. I, I don't know what it was, but for some reason I was really attracted to the uh, ties themselves, and this was the coolest looking one for me. So, yeah, really cool looking ship, one I've been waiting to get. So, like the miniature, like all the other miniatures, it's very high quality. Uh, the ships themselves come out over here. Now, one interesting thing with the TIE Bomber, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll cl pull up close ups, but also throw, throw the uh, cards on the screen. But uh, the TIE Bomber is uh, one of the heftiest ties with six hull. Still has two evade, uh, but still zero shield. So, got the same trademark, no shielding, but much more hull than normal. And as you can see down here at the bottom, it's got a ton of payload. We got two torpedoes, two missiles, and a bomb that it can carry. So this is uh, pretty much what the TIE Bomber is known for. Just its, it's massive amount of payload, and that's what the TIE Bomber is going to really be used for. So you have a generic uh, two pilot skill. We have a poor, uh, 4 1 Gamma Squadron. And then we're going to get into the named pilots. So at six, we have Captain Jonas. And Jonas. When another uh, friendly ship at range one attacks a secondary with the secondary weapon, it may reroll up to two attack dice. Uh, if uh, you recall from the Slave One expansion, the Fire Spray expansion, there was a pilot that did that with uh, secondary weapons, but it only lets you reroll one. Uh, Jonas is interesting because it can just be any ship, any other friendly ship within two, or was it with two? Yeah, uh, within one. Excuse me, range one can reroll two, so uh, it can't be itself. But that's still really awesome. I think that's a really good ability. It's definitely a supporting ability, a support power, but it's a really good one. Over here on uh, 7 Pilot School, we have Major Rhymer. And Rhymer is when attacking with a secondary weapon, you may increase or decrease the weapon range by 1, limit 1 to 3. So he can't make it 4, essentially, or make it to 0 somehow, which wouldn't make any sense anyway. Uh, so this is definitely more of an offensive, uh, cap offensively capable tie bomber. It's it's not really supporting as Jonas is. It's just all about itself. But but it's interesting. Both of these obviously can take elite pilot skills as well. So we're looking at six different upgrades they can take. Uh, Rhymer is going to get a lot of use out of the upgrades that come in this pack, though. So you do have reprinted assault missiles. Uh, nothing different about this. Range two, three, four attack dice. Uh, this one people have been really excited about, and that is the Advanced Proton Torpedoes. This is a 6 cost upgrade, and it's a 5 dice attack. You spend a target lock to shoot it, just like the other ones, and you may change up to 3 of your blank results to focuses. So if you have a focus on you, you can get 3 pretty much automatic hits on that. So this is an amazing card. It's only range 1. Of course, with Major Rhymer, you can increase up to range 2, so effectively making it the same as a proton, uh, normal proton torpedo, so that is a really, uh, really strong uh, card. I, I, I think, I don't think it's, you know, it's over the top, but you have to really set it up. You have to get those focuses, and you have to be able to use them, so essentially you're going to have to take a target lock to, to actually shoot the proton torpedo, and then you'll have to have a focus on you to actually utilize the power, so it takes a little bit of a setup, but it can be devastating when it hits. Over here we have Adrenaline Rush. Uh, this is when you uh, re reveal a red maneuver. You can discard this and just treat it like a white maneuver during the activation phase. So essentially it lets you get a 
a one-time get-out-of-jail-free card for a red maneuver if you really need to take an action. I actually think this card is better on a on a different uh, ship in the set, uh, which we'll look at in a moment, uh, a rebel ship actually. And then over here we have the two charges. We have seismic charges, uh, you drop a seismic charge behind you, and then a proton bomb, which is the same deal, you drop it behind you. Uh, the big difference is seismic charges hit everything within range one, and proton bombs actually just deal a, a face-up damage card. It, it bypasses everything. I almost left out one important cardboard element that I probably should have on camera. That'd be the movement dial. So here we have the TIE Bomber. Uh, it has some pretty standard movements. Ones. Uh, hard twos are, are uh, stressful for this one, so it can't take hard curves as much, which is, you know, more expected for a bombing type. Still got a decent uh, speed though, can get up to 4, and it has an interesting K turn, so it has a 5 K turn. It does have the ability to turn around, but it needs a lot of space to do it, so you gotta plan around that. You can't just turn on a dime, kinda like the uh, other ties can, so uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind when it comes to the TIE Bomber. Still overall, I think it's a good ship. So here we have the Lambda Class Shuttle, the only large ship in the expansion. Uh, as you can see, it's a nice, impressive looking model. It's even got folding wings, which is really cool. And overall, uh, it comes with a load of stuff. So obviously it's, it's a little more expensive than the other ships, so you expect it to come with more, but it's just a lot of upgrades. So let's start with the ships themselves. We have the generic, which is just the Omicron blue, uh, group pilot, uh, two pilot skill. As you can see, the uh, Lambda class shuttle has a pretty, pretty high resiliency. We have five hull, five shield, only one evade, but it has three firepower. So I mean, this thing is, it's pretty good all around the board. It starts off a little expensive at 21. And then starting at uh, Pilot Skill 4, we already have our first named pilot, which is Captain Yor. Uh, when another friendly ship at range 1 to 2 would receive a stress token, if you have two or fewer stress tokens, you may receive that token instead. So, it, this is definitely a support power. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, we also have the two crew. Uh, you can take uh, a cannon, and you can take this little, uh, I guess you call that a radar dish or something. We'll look at those in just a moment. But uh, that's very much a support power, soaking up uh, stress from other ships around you. Very useful with uh, things like TIE Interceptors that are, might be used and push the limit. We have Colonel Jinden. At the start of the combat phase, you may assign one of your uh, blue target lock tokens to a friendly ship at range 1, if it does not already have a blue target lock token. So what it means by a blue target lock token is essentially, if you've taken a target lock with uh, Jensen there, or excuse me, uh, Jinden there, uh, you can essentially at the beginning of the combat phase just pass that off to another ship uh, within range. So you can you can just give the blue one over to someone else, but he stays target locked on the ship that you were target locked on. So again, another really cool support power and uh, pretty interesting as well. I, I, I've never seen an effect like that where it affects just one half of the target lock. So I like that. That's really cool. And then over here we have uh, Captain Kagi. When an, an enemy ship acquires a target lock, it must lock onto your ship if able. So, this actually reminds me a lot of Biggs, where they're having to take target locks, but if they're within range, they have to target lock you, but to a degree, it, it might be a little bit better than Biggs, and a little bit worse. Obviously, having to target lock on someone doesn't mean you necessarily have to attack them, but if you're using secondary weapons that need target locks, then it kind of does mean you have to attack them. The other advantage this has is they don't, uh, the shuttle doesn't have to be within one range of another ship, it just has to be within range of the ship that's acquired the target lock. So. Uh, that's a real another, another really good uh, defensive support power. This one, the other uh, uh, Jinden was a little more offensive. Uh, yours, is kind of a mesh of the two. It's it's not it can be good for offense or defense. So the Lambda Class Shuttle, really good uh, support powers all across the board. There, over here we have a a title similar to the Millennium Falcon title. This is Lambda Class Shuttle title. It's the ST three two one title. When acquiring a target lock, you may lock on to any ship in the play area. So this works really well with Jinden, who's passing around the target locks. You don't have to be within three to give a target lock off, so really interesting combo there. I, I really like that. Over here we have uh, some of the crew members. Uh, we have a reprinted weapons engineer. Uh, we have Darth Vader as a crew member. And what he can do is actually... Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll bring it up here on screen anyway. But what he can do essentially is... Uh, you take two damage to automatically make a ship suffer a critical hit on an attack. I don't know what I think about this. I've seen mixed feelings on this. I've played it a little bit myself. Uh, it's really good for that one really strong hit, but unless you are doing a major critical, 
uh, like two ship damage or blinded pilot or something, it could really bite you in the butt. I put it on a, a bounty hunter because it has a lot of hole to take, or a lot of shields and hole to take, and it, it bit me in the butt. So, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think a critical hit's guaranteed enough to make him useful. However, I do like a lot of these other ones a little bit more. Rebel Captive, the uh, first time uh, the ship declares you as a target, uh, of an attack, you it automatically receives a stress token. Uh, that can be really, really useful. Uh, honestly, I, I really like that one. Uh, when defending, this is the flight instructor. When defending, you may reroll one of your focus dice if the attacker's pilot skill value is two or lower. You may reroll one of the blank results instead. Oh, and sorry, if the if it's two or lower, you can reroll re one of the blank results instead. Uh, that's a little more iffy to me. Uh, it's it's not bad, but for four points, I don't know. If, you could probably get something a little bit better. Navigator, when you reveal a maneuver, you may rotate your dial to another maneuver with the same bearing. You cannot rotate to a red maneuver if you have any stress tokens. Uh, I really like this one, especially for people that are still learning the game out. I think it's very similar to Boba Fett's power, that he can switch the bearing that he's turning or something along those lines. So uh, it's not one that I'd personally use because I prefer I, the way I play it, it. It feels like a crutch almost. I'd rather try to you know maneuver better my first time, but it's really useful. Uh, it's it's just a useful card. Intelligence Agent, at the start of the activation phase, choose one enemy ship at range 1 or 2. Uh, you may look at that ship's chosen maneuver. So, honestly, that one's pretty cool. Uh, it's not game-breaking or anything. It's going to win you a game, but it's one point. If you have an extra point and you have a crew member slot open, uh, it, there's no real negative to having it. It's just more information. Information's always good. Over here, we have these new upgrades. This is the uh, new symbol that was showing, the like radar dish. We have the Center Jammer. When defending, you may change the uh, change one of the attacker's hit results to a focus. The attacker cannot reroll the die with a change result. So it's four. It's four dice, or excuse me, four points. Uh, you can definitely affect an attack with that. Uh, they can still focus out of it, but they can't reroll it. So no target locks, things like that. So it, it can effectively just cancel a damage, and it's one you can reuse, not like a shield upgrade, which just goes away. Uh, I, I like it. It's, it's interesting. I. I would definitely try it out on one of these ships, maybe not on the other ones that can take uh, upgrades yet. We'll have to see what comes in the future. This one's one that uh, a lot of people have been looking at. Uh, this is actually just a regular upgrade, and that's the anti-pursuit lasers. Uh, after an enemy ship executes a maneuver that causes it to overlap your ship, roll one attack die. On a hit or crit, the enemy suffers one damage. That's only two points, and this can go on any large ship, so that includes the uh, Slave One and the Millennium Falcon. I like that a lot. Uh, for two points, it's a good filler card uh, if you just want to throw it on something. And that turns you into a really big asteroid, essentially. If they overlap you, not only they're not attacking you, they're having the chance of taking damage. Now, it's probably not going to win you a game. Again, it's just two points. It, if, it, if it gets one damage throughout the game, I feel like that would be worth it, though. Uh, even if it doesn't, it keeps pe it, it, it makes you have to think about that large ship a lot more. So it's either getting them, getting you damage, or it's making them avoid you even more than they were in the past. So I, I really like it. I think it's it's a really flexible card. And then we just have a reprint of the heavy laser cannon. So let's take a look at the movement dial. That's where the things get kind of interesting. So the Lambda Shuttle is the first ship in the game that can move zero. Probably one of the last ships. Uh, I can't think of a, a much slower ship than this, the Lambda Shuttle. Uh, it's got some easy ones. Uh, hard 2 is a stressed out maneuver. Got some other 2's here. Uh, an easy 3 is a stress, straight 3, and then easy 3 obviously stress, but then back to 0, so uh, not very maneuverable. That's going to be one big downside of the shuttle. You, you, there's a lot of uh, quick ships in the uh, Imperial Forces. TIE Interceptors, TIE Advance, TIE, all the TIEs are fast. Even the TIE Bomber is fast. Uh, so a lot of these cool support powers are going to force you to really think about your placement of ships. You're going to need to figure out where you want to put your uh, fast ships, how you want to bring them in, to take advantage of these cool effects. Because uh, you're obviously not going to be able to run together in formation the way you'd want to. If you do that, you can, you can do that, uh, but you're not really using the other ships to their potential if you're holding them back because of the shuttle. So it's kind of a give or take here. I, I still really like the ship though. These support powers are really, really interesting. Uh, Probably one of the cooler, some of the cooler support power, some really cool uh, synergy with the title and giving off target locks. Uh, overall, just it has a decent payload, a couple of crew members. Uh, so those upgrades are interesting. And it's not super, super expensive. 
Uh, it'll take a little more creativity to use, but I think it's it's a really strong ship. I actually I actually really like it. It's another good support ship, which is pretty cool. I like that we're getting more uh, not uh, maybe not subtly powerful, but more non-attacking powerful. So it's not just about blasting everybody now. So uh, let's uh, let's take another look. Let's go through the rebel ships now. Well, we're done with the Imperials here, uh, and we'll start with the B wing. Before we move on to the B wing here, uh, I should probably mention I left out the advanced sensors. Uh, this is actually an upgrade from the uh, shuttle pack. This is one that allows you, it's three points, and allows you to essentially take your action before you move if you skip your action phase after you move. Uh, pretty cool for barrel rolls and things like that. Uh, kind of get those out before you move so you can maybe avoid an asteroid here or there that you couldn't otherwise avoid. Another one I really like, actually I like that one better with this ship. So good segue into the B-Wing. Uh, B-Wing is one of my favorite ships from the original movies. I wasn't exposed until the later movies, uh, until a little bit later in my life, uh, so Return of the Jedi, I kind of missed out on some of the cooler ships until later. And seeing the B-Wing kind of uh, inspired me to look up a lot of other ships online and kind of get into the extended universe ships, so uh, that'll be another segue into the next ship, to a degree. Uh, the B-Wing itself, though, is kind of a, just an assault ship. So we have two rookie pilots, we have a blue squadron and we have a dagger squadron that's just a two and a four uh, pilot school, no special abilities. But as you can see, we have three attacks, same as the next wing, one evade, a little bit worse, uh, three hull, same as the next wing, and five shields, a little bit beefier. So uh, we're looking at something more online with like a fire spray light here, rather than uh, rather than X wing. You have a barrel roll, target lock, and focus, and you have two pro or two torpedoes, a turret, and a system upgrade there. So yeah, overall, really cheap way of getting a turret for sure. Uh, Double torpedoes has has a really good loadout. Maybe not as good as the Tie Bomber, but still really solid. Over here we have Ibitsam, uh, pot skill six. Uh, when attacking or defending, if you have at least one stress token, you may reroll one of your dice. A uh, lot better on attacking than defending, as you can see. You only have one evade, so not much going there. But still, it's really good. Uh, you'll see when we get to the movement why having stress probably isn't that big of a deal. Over here we have Tin Nub. When attacking, uh, one of your crit hit results cannot be cancelled by defense dice. So that's just a really powerful effect. Uh, which will come into play with a lot of these uh, offensive abilities it has down here. Uh, it comes with proton torpedoes, advanced proton torpedoes, and ion cannon. All three of those, uh, we saw the advanced protons a little bit earlier. The other two are reprints. Again, a good payload with two torpedoes. Works really well if you get a crit with a lot of those dice. Uh, you can't cancel it with tin nub. Uh, that's a really good combination there. Uh, we get the auto blaster which costs five. It's a three dice attack, but only has range one. Uh, your hit results cannot be canceled by defense dice. Pretty straightforward. Defender may cancel crit hit results before hit results. Breaking that rule of the game so it doesn't make you just take a bunch of crit hits as well. Uh, that's a really strong attack. Uh, it's three dice, but the, the range one limitation is a little bit rough. Uh, if you can work around that, that can be really tough. I, it's probably not something that I'd play too much, but it's really good, I think. Uh, it can be really good. Uh, fire control system I really like. Uh, this is another one of those uh, system upgrades. After you perform an attack, you may uh, acquire target lock on the defender. Very straightforward, two points. I, I like that one quite a bit. Uh, again, it's a way of getting actions without having to take the actions, which is useful for the B-Wing, because this movement dial, it's kind of rough. As you see, this is a very unique ability, a 2K turn. That's very, very agile. However, that's the only K turn on the dial. And as you'll see here, so the ones and twos are pretty green, but then as you get up here, light threes, three and light three that way, those are starting to get into stressy maneuvers, and then straight four is a stress. Hard ones are stresses. You're going to stress a lot if you're using the B-Wing. And that's where, like, the ability for Ibit's on, where you can uh, re-roll dice when you're stressed, uh, having a fire control system where you can actually... Uh, take a target lock when you do an attack rather than taking an action because you're not going to be able to do that if you're stressed out and even that ability for the advanced sensors where you can maybe do a barrel roll and then do a stressing movement uh, to, to do something like a K turn or something like that uh, all those I think are very synergistic with uh, the B-Wing itself overall I think the B-Wing is bulky slow but it can be very very strong I, I'm, I'm really liking the ship myself personally I like the uh ability to take really cheap heavy laser cannons. Uh, I think the real challenge is going to be learning how to maneuver with the ship. 
and I'm going to work on that myself, but I think it's actually a very solid ship. I, I did see, I've seen a lot of them being planed recently. Uh, people are trying them out in place of uh, X-Wings and larger ship builds as well with the uh, Millennium Falcons and things like that. Uh, it's definitely got some beef to it. It's, it's, it takes a while to burn through those shields. Uh, but I, I like it. It's it's a solid ship. Uh, another good offensive option for the Rebels uh, that isn't like a light ship like an A-Wing or a, just a turret holder like the uh, Y-Wing. So uh, let's take a look at the last ship here. It'll be the Hawk 290 from, uh, from the Extended Universe. So here we are with the first Extended Universe ship. Uh, as you can see, we aren't going into the prequels as it seems. Uh, I am assuming that's because the movies are heading into uh, extended universe territory with uh, direct sequels to the original movies, direct prequels, direct spin-offs. So we're going to see a lot more of this from, this, from the game, which I, I'm fine with. I, I like the extended universe much more than the prequels. Uh, so here we have the uh, Hawk 290, or the Moldy Crow, uh, Kyle Katarn ship. Uh, kind of a large ship, about Y-wing sized, pretty large. It looks pretty sleek, actually. I, I actually like this one. I didn't think I'd like it from the pictures, but having it up close, I do enjoy it more than I thought I would. So we'll look at the rookie for the stats here. Uh, only one, uh, one offensive diet there. Only one, one attack, so that's pretty low. Two evade, uh, not bad. X-wing relatable. Uh, four hole and one shield, so yeah, I mean, not much going on there. Uh, decent amount of hole, no shield, or pretty one shield, so almost no shields. Uh, only two evade, uh, or two evade, which isn't bad, but yeah, I mean, this thing's kind of a lug rolling around there. It has a target lock and a focus, kind of similar to a, an X-Wing there, and a crew and a turret, so... Yeah, I mean that's that's not that's pretty terrible as far as the stat line goes. Uh, but let's take a look at some of these pilots. So here we have Rourke Garnett. At the start of the combat phase, choose one other friendly ship at range one to three. Until the end uh, of the phase, treat that ship's pilot skill as twelve. So yeah, you're getting uh, I mean that's nineteen points. That's not too expensive, and you're getting uh, a strict upgrade. You can't beat a twelve pilot skill right now. The highest pilot, uh, the highest pilot skill in the game is a 9 and the uh, uh, with veteran instincts you're only getting up to 11 so for 19 points if you want your wedge to hit first period no questions asked uh, Roark's the guy. Uh, here we have Kyle Katarn uh, probably the most popular pilot of the ship uh, the most well known at least from the game it's uh, the games he's been in uh, at the start of the combat phase you may assign one of your focus tokens to another friendly ship within range 1 through 3 uh, he's got the uh, uh, elite pilot and talent upgrade as well uh, again, not too expensive. He's only 21 points here, and uh, he can pass around focus like nobody's business. Uh, think Garvin Dry's upgraded at this point because he's got the six pilot skill and everything. Uh, we'll get into why this this he, he combos really well with uh, some other things in the set, but that ability by itself is just really strong. And here we have uh, Janors. Uh, when another friendly ship at range one through three is attacking, if you have no stress tokens, you may receive a stress token to allow that ship to roll one additional attack die. So this is kind of a, I like that I like that ability quite a bit. It's kind of like a wider range version of Hal Runner. Uh, pretty much you take a stress instead, but I, I think that's actually really strong. Uh, I think the one thing that's gonna that might prove to be an issue with Janors is gonna be Cal Katarn overshadowing it at a cheaper cost. Uh, but in a multiple hawk build, uh, this this is a pretty tough uh, tough one to beat. I actually really like this ability quite a bit. Uh, taking stress isn't that big a deal with this ship. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, I like uh, another pack where I like all of the pilots for different reasons for the most part. Uh, over here we have the Ion Cannon Turret. Uh, this came with the Y-Wing, pretty standard, just a turret that ionizes. Now here we have the Blaster Turret. This is one's getting a lot of hype here. Uh, it's very similar uh, to an X-Wing output. You, it's four points, it's a three attack roll, and it's range one through two. You do have to spend a focus to perform the attack. Uh, but it can fire anywhere outside the firing arc. So having this uh, on the Hawk kind of makes brings it up to almost next wing level. Uh, you have more hull instead of shield, uh, but you still have the two of eight and you have three attacks. So it's a 360 firing arc. It does take focus, but uh, Kyle Katarn can pass focus. Now to work with that over here, we have the Moldy Crow upgrade. Uh, Moldy Crow is during your in phase, you do not... Uh, remove unused focus tokens from your ship. So you can store up focus, and here's an even better one. 
the recon specialist. When you perform a focus action, assign one additional focus. So I'm sure you can see where this is going. So these two on Kyle Katarn with the blaster turret. And suddenly you have a guy taking two focus, holding that focus after the turn, passing the focus around, using the focus to shoot a blaster. That's a heck of a combination. And you're getting that for 31 points. That's... That's a really good combo. And again, I love Janowars. I like that ability a lot. I even like the uh, Raw Arc ability as well. I think this is the one that's going to get the most hype, the most use, just because it's it's made to order. It came. It's like they just built those cards and said, this is going to be a combo. People are going to play it. Let them play it. This is going to be a good combo. So uh, I, I can't argue with it. If you watch our tournament report, uh, Sarah used this combination to a very, effect, uh, very good effect. Uh, it works really well. <laughs> You're looking over at a match, and they're st they have about five focus sitting on. They're just passing around like candy, uh, using focus to shoot a blaster, focus to change the dice. It's it's just really strong. I, I it's not it's not impossible to beat or anything, but it's like the ultimate support, I'd say. Uh, we have a couple other uh, crew members here. Uh, saboteur, change one enemy, or uh, choose an enemy ship at range one and roll one attack die on a hit or a crit. Choose a random face down damage and flip it face up. Uh, pretty interesting. Two points. Uh, again, it's a pretty random effect, so I'm not sure how often I'd use it myself. Uh, but changing a regular hit to a crit, it's not, not a bad effect for sure. Intelligence Agent, at the start of the activation phase, choose an enemy ship at range one or two. You may look at that ship's maneuver. So again, when we saw a little bit earlier, one point, I'd say it's pretty useful. Uh, overall, the standout here is obviously Kyle Katarn. It's a great combo. But again, lots of good supporting ships. Abilities to raise uh, pilot skill to 12, making an, essentially an unbeatable uh, pilot. You're not going to go ahead of that pilot period. Uh, the ability to add additional attack dice is just extremely strong. And for the cost of only a stress, that's really, really good. Uh, let's take a look at the dial here. Uh, some straight ones. We've got some light ones. No hard ones here. Hard two, light two, and it not not too super stressful yet. We, then we get into threes, it's a little more stressful, and then a straight four. So I'd say this is a little more forgiving than the B wing, just because the hard twos and things like that are aren't stressful. However, you don't get a K turn, and uh, you're you're gonna be kind of, you're gonna still gonna be fairly slow uh, to to keep up. So it's another one where you have to plan it out. Maybe a little more Imperial shuttle ish because it's not gonna be able to K turn. It's gonna need to kind of uh, list lazily around the battlefield. Uh, but still, overall, a uh, really solid ship. I uh, let, let's say you know. Let's just skip to the review part here. I'll give you my impression of the entire set and uh, what I think of it. So that's Wave Three in a nutshell. Overall, I really like this wave. I think the previous waves have been a little more overtly powerful. Uh, wave One, obviously, you get the X-wings, very strong at the base of the game. Wave 2, you got the introduction of the giant ships and uh, huge hull points like the Millennium Falcon, the first really good 360 firing arc, uh, the awesome potential of the fire spray. But this one, you, I mean, they're strong ships, but they're very, very good support abilities. I think the B Wing is probably the most obviously offensive one. It's kind of just a tank that goes out there and just piles on the damage. But the Moldy Crow, all those pilots have really cool support powers. The Lambda Shuttle, really cool support powers again. Uh, the TIE Bomber, it's still a very offensive ship, but it's kind of in the middle. It has really good payload, but it has uh, really good support powers to be able to reroll attack dice and raise and decrease its own uh, uh, attack strength or attack range for its secondary weapons. So, some very unique abilities. I like the way I like the fact that they're going into the extended universe rather than prequels, and I like the uh, variation that we're getting within their own abilities: upping pilot skill, uh, increasing and decreasing range, handing off half of a of a of a target lock, and these new system upgrades to even do more things other than just shield upgrades, doing things like moving before attacking or doing actions before moving, things like that. Um, overall, it's just a really good expansion uh, to a really good game. I'm having a lot of fun with X-Wing miniatures. I think this is one that people are going to be buying multiples of almost every ship. I've, I've already gotten a couple of the B-Wings uh, because I want a kind of a, a fighter swarm of those. Not swarm, but a couple of those flying out there. I've had some decent luck with that. Uh, I know I've seen triple Hawk builds with the uh, uh, Kyle Katarn's Hawk 2 290 there. Uh, 
some some other really good uh, builds with Thai bombers. Uh, if you watch our tournament report, uh, there's a very successful build that used a pretty much stacked to the brim Thai bomber with a huge payload. Sarah's uh, team used her own uh, Kyle Katarn. Uh, just really good stuff. I, I love this expansion. The ships, of course, look beautiful like always. So, I mean, if you're playing X-Wing Miniatures, you probably already have these, but uh, if you're looking to jump in, uh, this is a good time to jump in. They're reprinting a lot of the original stuff, and this new wave just came out and it's on the shelves. I say check it out, especially if you like Extended Universe. This really bodes well for the future. If you're getting a Kyle Katarn ship, we're probably gonna get some cool stuff from the EU in future sets, so definitely check it out, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that review, guys. Thanks for joining me here in the game room.